In today's episode, we're talking about what's my new side hustle? Selling online. Coming up. In today's episode, you're going to feel empowered, unstoppable, and gain the tools to accomplish anything you can dream of using real examples from some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. That's all happening today on the I Can Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the I Can Show podcast, where we show you the realm of possibilities and how to succeed in your passion. My name is James Martin. Thank you once again for joining us for another episode. I'm super excited about this particular episode today because we're talking about how to make money selling online. I think it's very important, especially now in the 21st century, that people need to really understand how to utilize the internet. I don't care what business you're in. I don't even care if you have a business or not. There are ways that you can actually make money from the internet. And I'm not, and I don't mean to say this in a sketchy way. I'm not saying you have to be sleazy, but there are ways to be, make a legitimate amount of income. And some people have made a good side income, sometimes even a part-time, sometimes even full-time income. There's been tons of stories online, but it just depends on finding something that works for you. So today's episode is just about talking about the different things that you can do to sell online and give you a bit of some ideas. And by the way, if you got any value out of this podcast, if something inspires you and something really stood out to you, please let me know either commenting down below or shoot us an email at magiccutmedia at gmail.com. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. All right, so selling online. Why would you want to sell online? So first off, there's two big reasons. One, even if you don't have a business, maybe you just have a hobby, you can still be able to sell online. And if you have a business, there's extra channels of revenue to be selling online. The other thing is you do not need a storefront. All you need is a link. That's all it is. The internet is a dominant real estate, but here's the best part. There's always room to grow and find a particular niche that you can serve. Especially the more tighter you can get on that niche, the better. Different forms of selling would be like affiliate, flipping, or digital downloads. Just a few different ideas. Here are the pros and cons to selling online according to Shopify.ca. The first pro is you can increase sales from a high traffic channel. The chief draw of selling on marketplaces such as Amazon and eBay is the scale of their online presence. Amazon draws nearly 184 million visitors a month and eBay is home to over 164 million active buyers. That's a heck of a lot of eyeballs and those eyeballs can translate into higher sales volumes. According to Amazon executives, sellers report on average 50% increase in sales when they join Amazon Marketplace. The other pro is you can acquire new customers. Nobody visits Amazon or eBay searching for your store, but they may be searching for and discover your products. Products they may not have discovered otherwise or that they may have purchased from a competitor. But once you've got a customer in the door, even if it's through a marketplace, you've got a chance to win repeat business through excellent service and fulfillment. This is especially the case if you're selling products in a category that encourages frequent repeat purchases such as a hobby, supplies, or fishing gear. Another pro is many people prefer shopping via marketplaces. So marketplaces are all about strength in numbers. This is as true for online markets as it is for real world examples like farm markets, shopping malls, and food trailer parks. The variety of all-in-one aspect of the marketplace can draw in a lot of customers who prefer that kind of shopping experience. Online marketplaces also bring the additional layer of single stream checkout and fulfillment support in order to create seamless experience for buyers. Now there are a little bit of cons. The first one is marketplace fees. Setting up shop on a marketplace can potentially supercharge your sales, but it also exposes you into another cost center. Most marketplace fees are deducted as a percentage of each sale and can vary from site to site and even category to category. In highly commoditized, low margin categories, the numbers may just not add up. Before selling your products on a marketplace, you'll want to make sure you have a good sense of your margins and a firm understanding of the marketplace fee structure. The other con is limited control. While the marketplace infrastructure has many advantages, it's important to remember that it can cut both ways. 
Marketplaces don't exist to help you, but to help themselves. They want to focus to be on the products, not the sellers. And that means they might restrict the degree to which you can brand your presence, communicate with customers, dictate what items you can sell and cannot sell, and so on and so on. And lastly, keeping inventory in sync. A marketplace is essentially a second point of sale. It sometimes can't be configured to talk to your shopping cart. In effect, both draw down the same inventory but don't sync with one another, making it challenging to understand your stock levels without lots of manual reconciliation. So just keep that in mind. I'm all for selling online. It depends on where you do it though. There's a lot of different places. Like you can even do selling on Facebook. You can do it through Amazon. But once again, it's important to find something that works for you and works for what you're trying to sell and what you're overall trying to do to help the community. Now we're going to go to the first part about selling online, which is affiliate marketing. This is when you sell other people's stuff and you get a commission. So according to, again, one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Think Media, um, Sean Cannell has a video called How to Make Money on YouTube with Affiliate Marketing. Here's what he says. So number one, you want to start with an Amazon account. He's a huge advocate for Amazon. It's one of these dominating platforms now. So you sign up for the Associated program and by the way you find that by google searching amazon affiliate program it's the best way you find an associate program with anyone most of the time you may not find that through the websites themselves next you're going to create a link to any product which will be a unique to you which means that no one can just copy your link and then just utilize it as their own that is a link specifically for you next you're going to share it you're going to make a product review video and put the link in the video description or share it anywhere. When someone clicks on the link and buys that product, you earn a commission. For Amazon, it's about 4 to 10% from that product. And if that person buys anything else within 24 hours after buying the product through your link, you will also get a commission for everything else that was purchased. Now, when you look at the math, you're not looking at a lot, four to 10%. I mean, that's like if someone bought $100 worth of stuff, you're going to get anywhere from four to 10 bucks. However, you want to multiply that again and again, and again, and again, and again. You may get a few people through one link for that video. You're going to do a blog and you're going to do another link or you're going to do another video and you keep posting all this content and all these links and then the numbers do multiply and add up later on. So it does work out later but it does take time and it does take some work. Society6, eBay, Amazon, and a lot of other sites and companies also do affiliate marketing. Now here's some big mistakes that a lot of people usually do with affiliate marketing. Anytime you can put in a link, I mean, I know that Sean Cannell, what he usually does is anytime he makes a video, it could be about anything. It could be about Instagram advice, you know, but what he'll do is he'll link up the products that he uses in order to make the video right? He'll tell you the camera, he'll tell you the lights, he'll tell you the microphone. That's one way he makes money. It's a way of just really utilizing everything you can, every opportunity that you can. A lot of people think it's sketchy and his answer is it's absolutely not. It's recommended and it's adding value to you and the product and to your buyer. It's a win-win-win situation. Authenticity. You don't want to be salesy and you don't want to look stupid. You're showing the link to the product because you're helping someone figure out a problem. Someone may be looking for something in particular. They're going to look to you. They're going to listen to your advice because you want to help them out. And then you're basically saying, here, instead of going to Walmart or going to a mall and trying to look through the aisles to try and find whatever you're looking for, here's a direct link to what I'm talking about. Boom, done. You have to disclose in your details that the link is an affiliate link. That's more of a policy thing. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you do a video or a blog, keep in mind that it is an affiliate. Here's a few pro tips. Number one, make sure you tell your audience about the links to the product are in the description of your video or wherever you're putting the links to. I don't care where it is, but just let people know that you are offering that link. It's good that people know that. Even if you're not doing a review, you can use the link to your equipment in the description in case someone's interested. I already mentioned that before. Optimize your video tags and names so that it's easier for people to find your video and want to watch 
and click on your link. So what that means is, let's say you're doing a video and it's like, you know, different sort of, I wanna say cameras, you know, cheap cameras that you can use. And just in your tags, you don't wanna just say, you know, best cameras and cheap cameras, but also say, you know, Canon this, Nikon this, Sony, Sony this, Panasonic this, Fujifilm this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Utilize every opportunity you can. The other thing is don't recommend a product you don't like. That's going to make you very, very salesy. Never tell someone to buy something. Big, big tip. Again, not being salesy. According to five affiliate marketing tips and best affiliate programs by Think Media, he talks about a lot of the different advice for doing an affiliate as well as some of his personal favorite. He's also mentioned that between himself and his wife, Sonia, they utilize 14 different affiliate programs, all active, 14 affiliate programs. Again, when you add up all the different money, all the different videos, because he runs Think Media, he does video influencers, he has his own channel called Sean Cannell, you know, his wife helps out too. There's a lot of profit right there alone. So different sort of sites that you can be a part in with an affiliate as an example would be like Envato Market. Envato does like digital music, photos, videos, website, programs, pictures, graphics, all sorts of things. Amazon Affiliate, B&H Photo Video, Adobe, Gearbest, Share a Sale, Flix Offers, ClickBank, Reward Style, Apple or iTunes, and literally almost any business out there. Walmart, Home Depot, Target, Starbucks, Uber, etc. Sometimes a business may offer you to be an ambassador or a partner as opposed to an affiliate. And it's the exact same idea. And you can even utilize this for yourself. Can you offer someone else an affiliate to your business in order for you to get more customers? Um, but it's a, a win-win both ways. And if you're making a video and using a link, here's a few special tips. Number one, do your video right. It's about value. And as I've mentioned before, value for your video is either information or entertainment or both. Use searchable names, again, ranked videos. Use the right product with the right person at the right time. Research with your niche really, really helps. White space, which is low competition. Videos where there isn't a lot of other people doing the same thing. Also, of course, make sure it's a good video, a detailed video, and then last, make sure you have a clear call to action. Let people know that, listen, after you've reviewed a product or after you recommend X, Y, and Z, let people know, we're gonna leave the products to these links down in the description or at the bottom of this blog or in our social media post or whatever, so you can grab those exact products for yourself. All right, now that's affiliate. Now I want to talk to you about something else that's sort of interesting and really caught my eye, which is flipping. This is a challenge from Gary Vaynerchuk that he started called the 2017 Flip Challenge. In a video that he posted to his channel called How to Make $20,170 in 2018. Get it? $20,170? Here's the idea. Everyone has a lot of stuff that they don't use. What you're going to do is you're going to search on eBay or Amazon for those exact items and see how much they're selling for. Also, by searching, see what the supply and demand is for that item. Next, you're going to post your items to eBay, Craigslist, Etsy, Amazon, or even Facebook Market and sell your item. The other alternative to this is, because that does sound easy, what a lot of people are actually, what a lot of different people are doing kind of as a side hustle, and Gary says this is one of his favorite activities to do on a weekend, is you buy items for cheap at a garage sale and then sell those online. And it becomes a fun hobby, especially in the summertime. So I'm curious, I haven't done flipping, but if you found any benefit, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Let me know how it's benefited you. And if you could please share your story about what you've done and how that's worked out. All right, the last thing I wanna to talk to you about is the 10 digital products that you can sell online right now, according to youtube.com slash Xavier Kelly. 
This is just to give you guys a few ideas on how you can really utilize the internet to sell whatever you need. Maybe there's something here that you can use to benefit your business and sell things. And personally, I think everyone, like everyone can benefit from at least one of these different things. Books and eBooks. Selling a, a digital book on Amazon, Kindle, Nuke Press, iBooks Author, Google Play, ClickBank, anywhere. You know, you could sell a course using Skillshare, Udemy, and I've also found a recent website called Think Ethic, which helps you, you know, figure not just how to sell your course, but how to develop a course from start all the way to finish. You could sell online softwares, and there's websites that let you create stuff like that. Can you create downloadable software, especially if you're encoding? Add-ons for existing software. I know a lot of different people create themes, plugins, extensions, especially for some techie people out there. Can you create a mobile app? Stuff for Android or iOS or Windows. How about stock items? Can you sell items on, let's say, Shutterstock? Like, or can you sell other things on other sites like music, graphic, photos, videos, etc.? Can you sell a template, a template to create music, a template for images, a template for graphic designs, anything? Digital art as music, images, or pictures. And finally, could you sell a membership site to get special privileges? All right, so I wanna hear from you right now. Has there been any sort of advice that has inspired you to want to sell online? If so, I want you to please let me know down in the comments or shoot me an email at magiccutmedia at gmail.com. I would love to know your thoughts. If you got any value out of this, I would love to invite you to our special merchandise shop at shop.spreadshirt.ca forward slash I can show. There's some amazing merchandise there. And if you purchase any of our merchandise, you're supporting us so we can continue into 2019 make these podcasts better, do more of them, and be able to reach out to other entrepreneurs to really, really fire up that passion. And if you got any value out of this yourself, we would love it if you could please share these podcasts with other like-minded entrepreneurs. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening to these podcasts. I can't wait to see you next time and have the most amazing day ever. You can do anything. Take care.